Hey guys, welcome back, Orbomb here, bringing you another one of our competitive analysis. Different format this time, I didn't really have time to like sit down and make all those edits and stuff like that that I usually do. So uh, I'm just going to kind of take everything straight from Pokebeach. Shout out to Pokebeach for being an amazing website when it comes to TCG stuff. Um, but today we're talking about Tapu Koko. Now, at first I was very meh about Tapu Koko, but the more I look at it, the more I get excited about playing Tapu Koko. Shout out to all you guys that told me I was wrong about Tapu Koko not being that good. Because I think Tapu Koko has some potential, and a lot of it too. I'm really excited to talk about Tapu Koko. So before we get into the video, be sure to drop a like if you have not already. Subscribe, share, and while I do my intro, I actually want to see if I can pull up my last competitive analysis video because I want to be able to respond to any comments in that video, just like I did in the, in the Metagross one. You guys seem to enjoy that. So let me see if I can do that real quick. So give me like a slight second. I know, super duper professional. You guys are, I've, I didn't even notice that you guys are actually watching me do, do this too. So yeah, this is where we're just gonna look at all these stupid videos. I record way too much. So we're gonna go over my Tapu Bulu one. I'm gonna quickly pause my video before you can hear my stupid voice on top of my stupid voice. But that can be something I do at the end. But for now, <clears throat> We're gonna go over Tapu Koko. Now, Tapu Koko is really interesting. As you can see, 170 HP, so it's not too bad. It's a basic GX, so I mean, it's pretty average HP for that. Has two interesting attacks, one interesting ability. Its retreat cost is two, which is not the greatest, but you'll see how we can mitigate that in a second. But we also have no weakness. And when I see a card with new, no weakness, I think, wow, that has a lot of bulky capabilities. And I'm actually really excited to talk about my my kind of version of this deck list that i'm thinking about today so its first ability is arrow its first thing on the card is its ability which is called arrow tail once during your turn before you attack you may play this card from your hand onto your bench you may move any number of lightning energy attached to your pokemon to this to, uh, attached to your pokemon to this pokemon if you move any energy switch this pokemon with your active pokemon now at first i was like okay it's like it's like it's like the old bust in dragonite which wasn't the greatest card in the world but the difference between that and this card is that this card only requires one type of energy and we have cards like max elixir in play so putting three energy on the field especially by turn two not hard at all you attach turn one you can't attack that turn uh you max elixir just land one of your four max elixirs in your deck and then you attach again and boom you have three energies in play and having just those three energies means you can switch between tapu kokos non-stop the whole game without worry and then while the game goes on before they knock out your second tapu koko you just have enough time to set up another three energies on the field that way whenever one tapu koko gets knocked out that has three energies on it you just put another three on you have another three on the field and then you just keep switching between tapu kokos so the ability to be able to uh, take a damaged Tapu Koko from your active that has been attacking, put down a new Tapu Koko on the bench so that you can switch the active one with the energies to the new one and then put the energies on the new one and then start attacking again with a full HP Tapu Koko is really cool. Especially when you can combine it with Max Potion so you can actually Max Potion the one on the bench that is damaged and then you just attach Max Elixirs to have that one set up and ready to go as well in case the active one does get knocked out. So Max Potion plays plus Tapu Koko makes Tapu Koko a great card in my opinion. Um, it also has the attack sky claw hitting for 130 damage at first i was like and eh, it's not that much but then i realized whatever you're literally two at koing everything i don't know what resists lightning at the moment that's notable that's no um that's notable but i don't know there's more things that are weak to lightning than resist lightning that are notable like Evelton and stuff like that and shamans even though shaman you already oko anyways but if they have a belt on then you oko for sure and uh hitting for 130 is great at first i was thinking maybe uh, maybe you can use a choice band on it to add 30 damage. All right. At first, I was like, choice band, add 30 damage. You're hitting for 160. If you play Kakui, you can hit for uh, 180, knocking out a lot of things. And maybe it's worth teching in one. But in my opinion, because of how fat you are, I think fighting Fury Battle is still better just to secure those two AKOs while you're healing in the back um, and switching between your Tapu Kokos very easily. <clears throat> Excuse me. But well, that is an option for you guys. Interesting. If you guys don't know, it does 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon EX or active Pokemon GX. So say you're fighting a Tauros and they don't have a belt on. 
<coughs> which you can control because we have cards that remove belts now. Um, you have the Choice Band plus a Kakui, and then you hit for 180 and you Oko the Taurus. That's like the biggest, that's the, that's the most important situation in my head because you don't want to leave a Tauros damaged. Um, but that would be a reason why to play this. But honestly, I think I'd prefer Fighting Fury Belt. You hit for 140 at that point, and then you can uh, have 100, 210 HP because with 210 HP, you actually have this brand new... Uh, stadium card that goes really really well with Tapu Koko because you want to increase how fat the card is. Uh, I mean, you could also play Rough Seas, but if you're playing Max Potion, I feel like this is just better. Um, each po each player's Pokemon Grass and Lightning, each player's basic Grass and Lightning Pokemon take 30 less damage from opponent's po opponent's Pokemon attack. So Aether Paradise Conservation Area means that you'll be taking less and less and less damage. Um, from an attack. Say you're getting hit by a Darkrai. A Darkrai has a bunch of energies on the field. They have a uh, something realistic. Let's say like six energies, all right? They're hitting for 140, 150 with a choice band uh, with a with a belt or 170 with a fighting fury belt with a with a choice band. But with your conservation area, you're taking 30 less damage, which means now they're only hitting you for 140. Even with Kikui, even if they did play Kikui, they're still only hitting you for 160, which means a Darkrai with eight energies on the field, which is a lot of energies, still can't Oko you, which is ridiculous. No matter what they do, they cannot Oko you, which is so cool. And then you just play your other top of Koko, you max potion the one, so you, it has a hard, they have a harder time knocking it out. And that's assuming you don't even have a Fighting Fury belt on. If they, if you have a Fighting Fury belt on, a Darkrai needs to have let's see, eight is a uh, oh, hold on hold on eight energies is 160 right because and then they do 180 then it gets reduced hold on maybe i miscounted i think i miscounted in my head dark Rai with eight energies does 180 damage i believe because they have the 20 damage plus 20 for each dark energy 180 then it gets reduced to 150 uh, but if they did have a choice band they could still knock you out which would be go back to 180 and then um if they had a Kikui, they would do 200, but they wouldn't knock you out if you had a belt on. I think that's where the math was in my head. So if you don't have a belt on, if you have a belt on, a dark ride with eight energies cannot knock you out no matter what they do. Even if they have a even if they have a choice band plus a Kikui, Kikui, they can't knock you out. Let me know if I'm doing my math wrong, but that's still that's still still very, very good. Um so Tabu Koko has a lot of tanking capabilities, which is why I like the Fighting Fury belt with the Aether Paradise. I don't know why I went to Choice Band. Um the Aether Paradise is really, really nice. Plus, if you play Max Potion, it's better than Rough Seas because Rough Seas heals you, but this actually means you take 30 less damage each time. So, there's a bunch of benefits there. Uh, it also has the GX attack, which is really, really nice. Tapu Thunder GX. Let's go back to the Darkrai example. If your Darkrai has 8 energies on the field, well, Tapu GX uh, does 50 damage times the number of energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon. So, they, they have 8, you are hitting for 400 damage. It is a really cool. I, I like the Tapu. I like Tapu Thunder GX because in a lot of situations, your opponent is going to want to set up a bunch of Pokemon so that so that they can easily beat you because they're going to be way behind because you're constantly healing and stuff like that. So <clears throat> you could punish them for putting down a bunch of energies on the field by blowing something up. Something that Tapu Koko does have a little bit of difficulty doing is getting Okos. You have Tapu Thunder, so you get that one big Oko that you need that game. So if you want to fight that Tauros and your opponent has a bunch of energies on the field, well then you just Tapu Thunder. Otherwise, you just kind of let go, let go of a Pokemon. <clears throat> so Tapu Thunder, uh, Tapu Koko is going to be a really, really cool deck. You can combine it with things like Jolteon and Raikou. Jolteon is just a good way to stop things like Tauros because, you know, basic Pokemon can't attack. <clears throat> and then you have uh, Raikou, which is a non-GX attacker, which could be useful in the future. Plus, it it's forces a 7 prize game. And then we also have Field Blower, because you really rely on having abilities and your stadium on the field, right? So Field Blower helps you a lot there. You can choose uh, having your abilities, not your stadiums, by the way. Choose up to any two in combination of Pokemon tool cards and stadium cards. So this can get rid of Garbodor's, um, Garbodor's thing. Garbodor's Float Stones, that way they can't turn off your abilities. This can get rid of Silent Labs. The only thing it doesn't get rid of is going to be... Um, Muck, a little in Muck, but you can always Lysander out the Muck and take a knockout there because Muck only has 110 HP. So you can always do that. 
but not many people are playing muck right now but we might see a big influx of muck in the future depending on how this field blower affects the metagame and how people how comfortable people are with it uh because we still have silent lab but now silent lab and <laughs> carbador are affected by field blower so maybe muck is going to be the best way to turn off basic abilities it is going to be the best way to turn off basic abilities but you also have to worry about muck's gigantic retreat cost of four um Talking about, talking about the video being off sync. Oh, whatever. I'll, I'll deal with that later. Sorry, recording a video right now. Um, field blower. Yeah, so field blower is going to be really nice in this deck. And then, of course, we have Tapu Lele. Now, Tapu Lele is interesting, right? Because you're probably going to want to set up some shamans and Tapu Leles and stuff like that to set the field up. Uh, Tapu Lele can help you get your supporters that you need, but you can always Ninja Boy Tapu Lele back into the deck. Um, you could parallel, I guess, but you're probably not playing parallel in this deck. Now, just another way to help you get rid of uh, get rid of uh, Pokemon on the bench. I think Ninja Boy is going to make make a really nice tech in this deck because you can Ninja Boy your Tapu Kokos into other cards. Put the put the uh, Tapu Kokos back in the deck. That way you can draw them again and then use Tapu Kokos ability once more. I really like I really like the idea of playing Ninja Boy in these kinds of decks. Ninja Boy also helps you get rid of your Pokemon that are liabilities such as your Shamans and your Tapu Leles, and Tapu Lele helps you get Ninja Boy on top of that uh, as well as any other draws supporters or Lysanders or whatever else you might need um as attacks don't really matter because you won't be able to do it but you will be able to do the energy drive the 20 damage times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon now you're very rarely going to be using this unless your opponent really really stocks up on energies and you already use the um you already use your GX attack on top of Coco uh but it's an option I suppose you can't hit for weakness with it which is why it doesn't really matter that much but yeah that's top of Lele just another top of that to the deck and then I'm going to throw this in. This probably won't take effect for another three months because we're probably getting this card in Sun and Moon 3 because it was released as a it, it was it was released as a Sun and Moon uh, Strength and Expansion set pack for the second set in Japan, which means we usually don't get those till the third set for us. But Acerola is going to change the game for Tapu Koko. Acerola's ability is choose one of your Pokemon with damage counters on it, return that Pokemon and all cards attached to it to your hand. So you could really just cut the um, amount of max potions you play in the deck to spam Acerola because Acerola also puts back the energies that you might want to keep on your Tapu Koko for attachments in the future on top of your Fighting Fury Belt that you want to uh, keep so you can attach it to a different Tapu Koko. So, because you're going to be damaged, we already talked about how you play Tapu Koko to move your damage one back to the bench and put in a new fresh one every time you put it down. Well, with top, with this card, it's going to change the deck completely, making it even better whenever this card comes out. So I cannot personally wait for this because Tapu Koko seems like it's going to be one of my new favorite decks. I don't usually like electric and lightning decks because I know there's none of the cards released for uh, for lightning have, has been super interesting or like my style of play but tapu coco i can just tell i'm gonna really enjoy playing it so um that's gonna be the video guys now we're gonna go ahead and switch to ptcgo i'm not really sure if i want to keep doing this guys to be honest because um mm -hmm. i don't know i just feel like a lot of people don't like it when i build like these test decks but i'm gonna go ahead and give it a try anyways uh, just this one time let me know if you guys like this or not i'm gonna do something different though i'm gonna build this live so we're gonna take standard stuff all right and uh, ignore this <laughs> uh we're gonna use this as a the tapu coco substitute because because i'm doing this live i don't have time to like put in pictures and everything like that so i i would recommend playing four tapu cocos for absolute sure uh, and i'm gonna do a one one line of raikou and jolteon and then we can do i guess shaman oh i have it filtered for i was looking at different basic electric type pokemon to see what's actually pretty decent to play in this deck and there wasn't there's not that many good electric types it's probably another reason why i don't play a lot of electric type decks uh we're gonna go ahead and play two shaman of course and a singular tapu lele you could always bump this up to two but i'm gonna put jirachi in the substitute as a substitute all right we're gonna pick this uh expand it as well please thank you uh are you just not going to show me my jirachi Where's my Jirachi? I already, I, I filtered it. Expanded is allowed. Hold on. Apply? Huh. Um. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> Let's do this. I think I must have clicked standard or something, or expanded or something. Let's do uh, Jolteon. <laughs> One Jolteon. 
<laughs> oh, I'm super professional, guys. I'm misspelling Raikou. Uh, one Raikou. There we go. There are my expanded cards. <clears throat> what did I put in it? It's like Togedemaru. I think that's the name. Four, to four Tapu Kokos. Tapu Demarus. <laughs> and of course, we have our um, two Shamans. And then one top of Lele to help us get our draw supporters, which I'm going to put in Jirachi EX because it has this, the same exact ability. As far as trainers go, of course you're going to want your max potions. I mean max elixirs and max potions. So I guess I'll just click max. So I'm going to do I'm going to do four for now. I want to see how it works in the end of the at the end of this. But we we'll definitely want four of these because I'm playing max elixirs and max potions. I do want my um, males because you know consistency is a thing. And I am going to, of course, play my Seekers. And I don't want to play any Nest Balls because you want to keep everything in your hand until you can play it. So all Ultra Balls all the time for this deck. Nothing else. I don't think there's any other ball that would work, honestly, in this deck. You could play Nest Ball for maybe Raikou, but you do want to... I think, I think you're better off Ninja Boying into them. <clears throat> as far as items go, we want to have Fuel Blower, which I'm going to put in two. I'm going to put two of these, though, because I feel like it's super important. To be able to get rid of things like fighting fury belts uh, actually not fighting fury belts but more like stadiums and stuff like that and as far as stadiums go i'm going to put in rough seas to replace the other one so um to replace the aether paradise one and i'm just putting in a bunch of like a bunch of huge numbers of things that you would expect there to not be huge numbers of uh expect there to be huge numbers of i am play one hex mania because item lock is a thing um of course we have our sycamores play four of these we're gonna play our, before we get into the big stuff, I'm gonna just get Ninja Boy so I don't forget it. Uh, we'll play, I think I like two. I'm gonna play two. We're gonna play our two ends. Now obviously I'm gonna cut down a lot of cards. Um, and play our two Lysanders. One, two. Uh, let me go ahead and see if I'm forgetting anything before I get into energies. Actually, we have a lot more space than I thought we did. Um, filters for review. Apply. Let me see what I'm forgetting. We don't need to link one anymore because field blower is a thing. You could always play tech stuff like e hammer and escape rope. <clears throat> I do like one escape rope. I'm forgetting my belts, so I'm actually gonna put in uh, three belts, maybe even four. I'll, I'll do four for now because like belts are just that important. <clears throat> but I'm probably gonna bring it down to three in a second. Uh, heavy ball doesn't help us because all of our Pokemon have two or less retreat. Uh, I already did Max Elixir. Ranger. I, I mean, if you want to be that guy, you could always take in a Ranger if you fear Jolteon. Um, I think you can Lysander around Jolteon, but if you fear Jolteon, then I would recommend playing um, playing a Ranger. Maybe a Jolteon gets, becomes really, really big. Definitely play Ranger. Um, but, I mean, it's a very simple deck, right? I'm going to see if I can... I'm going to cut out one of these... Uh, one stadium, we don't need four. Um, two, 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 four. The deck is looking kind of solid. And then you can just put in 10 lightning energies. And if you want even more to land your max elixirs more, more, then I would put in more. But 10 seems pretty decent to me. And 10, there we go. And that's going to be the deck list. At least that's what I would play, if anything. Uh, I have my max potions, right? Four max potions, four elixirs. Honestly, if you want to be that guy as well, you could always cut down the number of max potions. Um, one max potion, one ninja boy, one tool scrapper, and one male. And then put in four puzzles. That way you could reuse your max elixirs more. Um, because I I'm, I I don't know if you feel like if you feel like it's necessary I personally don't think it's that necessary you can reuse your max potion and max elixirs super rods tool scrappers I suppose but uh, because you don't really need that many on the bench because of your Tapu Koko plays you can get away with not playing that so uh, this would be the deck list I would play personally but thank you guys all so much for watching we're gonna go over the comments now but before you leave for those of you who don't care go ahead and drop a like. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already brand new if you're brand new to the channel I do do a lot of TCG stuff occasional uh, showdown, uh, single battle stuff. Probably not a lot of VGC as of late, but I do want to get back into it whenever there is like a weird format change. Um, but we're going to go over the comments now. Um, Nick wants me to do these. I'm looking into it. I play Tox... Uh, I want to do Toxapex soon. 
So I'll probably do Toxapex. Sylveon, I'm trying to think of what... Let me. Here's another thing for you guys to answer in the comments down below. What do you think is going to pair well with Sylveon? I personally can't think of it. Vicavolt GX, I'm going to talk about Vicavolt GX in the future as well. Um, but Sylveon, I'm so confused. I'm not too sure what is going to do well with Sylveon. Uh, but another one, but it's about top of the I'm pretty sure we're only getting... Uh, Pretty sure we're only getting it into 10. My thoughts on top of Bulu is I can see it as a good partner in grass decks or even being in the quad top of Bulu GX deck. Only reason I only reason is because of its 1080, 180 HP. And if you don't want to worry about uh, worry about choice, man, you can always use Fighting Fear Belt. Yeah, yeah. I, I talked about all this stuff in the video. The other thing of uh, is alternate attacker in Lorantis decks and other grass decks that aren't Decidueye Plume, but you could focus. Uh, but you could focus or on Bulu and Lorantis decks and put a thin in Lorantis line and focus more with Bulu. I do like the idea of playing Bulu with Lorantis GX, but <clears throat> I think it's interesting, right? Because you can use the new Lorantis to increase the attack damage, or you can use Lorantis GX to consistently attack with 180 damage, but then you have to switch between the two. It's similar to the Mega Beedrill deck I played, but you're not paralyzing, you're just kind of... You're just kind of doing things non-stop. At the moment, no, not for common, just leaving the like, <laughs> just leaving this here. Obviously, have I not hearted these yet? I guess I must have never gone into the comment section. Um, I agree. I agree with this completely. I just wanted to know. And I gotta miss, I gotta not misspell my words anymore. Um, I'll look into them for sure. And. Uh, please do one for Sylveon GX. Everybody wants me to do Sylveon. I'm gonna try to do Sylveon, but I might do the other ones first because they're probably easier for me. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be the video, guys. Oh, also, hold on. I, I was looking at the comments. And I didn't even... I even... Hold on. There we go. Here are the comments that I was talking about. I didn't even, like, talk about the... What, anyways, here's the comment I was reading, and here's this. Uh, he wants me to do all this stuff. Everything I just said... Imagine that this was there too. I don't have a lot of comments in this video though. So if you guys want to leave a comment, remember if this video gets 25 likes, uh, I will give five random winners in the comment section down below a chance to win two Sun and Moon and two Rolling Skies packs uh, from, on TCGO, of course, like I always do for all my videos nowadays. Let's try to hit that 25 like goal. It would be greatly appreciated. And I will see all of you uh, next time. Peace.